Hey, Commanders Nation, it's your boy Hog Farmer Keith from the Hog Farmers Charitable Foundation. Before you start listening to Owning the Lab podcast presented by Red Zone in the Lab, check out our Amazon Smile, a simple and easy way to support the Hog Farmers Charitable Foundation every time you shop, and it costs absolutely nothing to you. Welcome to Owning the Huddle podcast. I am Deuce Breeze and DT in the building we are here to preview the cleveland browns game on sunday we're going to talk a little bit about the cleveland browns we're going to talk about our keys to win we're going to talk about some injuries and we also got uh it's not about us segment which i think is going to be very funny which we was just talking about on spaces about the las vegas raiders so on the other side of this we are going to start chopping it up Welcome to Owning the Hotter podcast presented by Red Zone in the Lab, where we discuss all things Washington Commanders, from the executive and front offices, coaches, players, and fan experience. Join DT, Breeze, CeeLo, and Deuce as they break down the pre- and post-games. Do it because you love it and not because it loves you. Hail Commanders! Welcome, welcome, welcome the Cleveland Browns. Now, we all, all know all the drama Cleveland went through uh, in all season. We don't really need to get into that. But let's kind of start right where the 11-game suspension came down, DT. Uh, when that suspension came down for the Browns and you knew they was going to go with Brissette, not brisket, Brissette, <laughs> uh, what were your thoughts initially on the Cleveland Browns this season? Well, I think it was a hard deal for them. Um you know, knowing the uh, sacrifice they had to do to get a quarterback of that stature in Deshaun Watson and knowing all the legal situations that he had to deal with. Um, I think this team, you know, they saw themselves supposed to be one of the top teams in the AFC and not only that, the a- NFL. But um, there comes a price with that. You know, I think there was a lot of things that affected them um, down the road, um, seeing their defense falter. From last year, they were a top ten defense last year, and this year they haven't lived up the expectations. And uh, some things on the offense not going their way. Um, Nick Chubb is still there, and they have Brissett. And to me, Brissett did a good, good, admirable job. I think for him, he kind of once again put himself out there in the market for any team that needs a quarterback in an upcoming um, off season. What about you, Breeze? What was your thought on the Cleveland Browns? <laughs> I mean, I kind of felt bad for them considering the, the draft capital and all the, the money that they gave up to acquire, you know, their their starting quarterback. Um, just for everything, they kind of blow up in their face like that. I definitely kind of felt bad for them. But, you know, once all of that kind of blew over, I figured it would be a, a, a standard, typical Cleveland Brown season, which is, you know, kind of <laughs> to this point. <laughs> Um, so of course they had a whole they had one of the, the contract things they had going on was Kareem Hunt. We understand Kareem Hunt is from that area. We understand Kareem Hunt wants to play there, but I wonder to myself after this season, because they didn't extend him, um, his attempts is up uh, at a crazy rate from last year. Um, do you all think that Kareem Hunt is gonna be a Cleveland Brown next year, DT? Um, you know. I, I do not because I think the running back position has changed somewhat in the past couple of years. Um, we've seen that production get replaced very easily now. Um, 
especially with being running back by committee. So I think he's going to go in the market next year, and there's going to be a team, uh, a contending team more than likely that, you know, needs some help in the backfield, wherever it's um, catching the ball out of the backfield, prote- helping with protection and things like that, or become his own man to be a lead back again. Remember, this guy was drafted by Kansas City, and he put on a show Dope. for two years. He was Dope. there before his own <laughs> Man, um, Kareem Hunt is getting a little older, right? But he doesn't have a lot of mileage, you know what I mean? Um, yes, Nick Chubb has been getting hurt these last last couple of years, and Kareem Hunt filled in. Um, to some people, that's one of the best backfields in the NFL. That's something you might not want to break up. But, Breeze, do you think Kareem Hunt wants to be uh, number one somewhere? Uh, I, I'm positive he wants to be at number one somewhere, even with, like you said, the factors of, of him getting up there in age a little bit. I think in the right in the right situation, I absolutely think he wants to be at number one. Um, you know, I feel I, I feel like he'll probably, you know, explore his options going into the offseason, even if Cleveland openly wants him back. And eventually, ultimately, he'll end up leaving and going somewhere where he can kind of jump on and maybe not be a, like a pure number one back, but kind of be more of like the lead guy in the, in the, in a committee kind of thing, group kind of thing. Let's get to our injuries. Let's talk about the injuries for our team. It's a whole lot of DMPs on that injury report. Man. It's crazy. Um, obviously it's some type of bug going around, um, Ashburn, uh, players getting sick, um, you know, having DMPs, not practicing. Hopefully they all able to, to get better, but it looks like even though Chase Young is questionable, he doubled his snaps. Um, last week, oh, he looks like he's a go. Um, and before we go into more injuries, let's just get uh, do we think Chase Young's gonna be a full go, or do you think they're gonna try this snap count thing again? Breeze, yeah, <laughs> same thing. So, like I had been saying in the weeks leading up to it, is once you clear Chase Young, he's gonna be Chase Young, you know, and you, you can't really stop that. Um, I feel like they ha- they went into the game legitimately like, okay, Chase is going to play 15 to 20 snaps. And once he got out there, he looked he looked good. I mean, let's call it what it is. He looked good. You know I mean? He wasn't Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, but whichever Bosa brother they had out there, like, <laughs> he, he, looked, he, he looked good, though. He looked very serviceable and good for his first time playing football in over a year. Um, I think they may go into it with the same plan, but, you know, once, once the game starts going, Chase Young going to be Chase Young. That's how I feel about it. Where you at with it, um, DT? He, he had an impact, right? He was the highest graded PFF player. Um, you know, PFF is graded by snap counts and actually involved in the play. So we can take that, you know, with a grain of salt. Um, he had a good de- – how do you think his impact is going to be for this game that he – you know, he was out there, he tested the leg out, you know, he got hit, fell in the piles, did all of those type of things. Um, how, where, where you think his impact going to be for this game? Well, the first thing is um, he exceeded our snap count um, projects that we have for him. I see yeah, he, he, <laughs> yeah, he played 30, and he looked good out there, man. I mean, we look at the all 22 um, going up against the tackles um, like in, in 49ers and things like that. I seen that first time he went against um, Trent Williams. He went through almost both of them at the same time, so I'm like, yeah, this guy he back, and then um, <laughs> the stuff on third down um, in the run game. Like, I think we're going to see more of Chase Young um, this week. Definitely, probably in the fifty, probably at 50 snaps will be good for him just to boost up, get his conditions more. Again, he's still um, going through the flow and things like that. But I, I think we're going to see a little bit more impact this week, especially with going against this Cleveland deep uh, offensive line. Uh, Antonio Gibson, it looks like he might not be a go, right? Um, looks like that leg, that ankle was bothering him in the game last week. They even pulled him off kick returns. Um, so how confident are you in with um, Jonathan Williams, Breeze? Do you think that he can bring that type of element you know, uh, out, the, out the backfield, that production, that kind of Gibby is um, – that we're without by Gibby being out? So If he's out. Yes. Yes, yes, and no. Um, from a production standpoint, yes, you know, in the limited, the limited opportunities he's gotten so far this season, he has looked good and has taken advantage of, of a lot of them. Um, from, so from a, from a production standpoint, and even even adding in uh, Jared Patterson, I can see the two of them kind of filling that that gap a little bit. Um, but neither one of them kind of fill the same role 
as Gibson would feel. Um, so they'll kind of have to find a different way to kind of use them and come to that production. But I think they'll they'll do a decent. They, the two of them can do a decent job of kind of filling that filling that hole, filling that void a little bit. You know what I mean? At least on offense. About special teams, I you know I don't know about that. But <laughs> if he's not able to go, do you think they bring up Jared Patterson, DT? And if they do, what type of role you think he'll have? Um, I do believe they'll bring uh, Patterson up this week. Um, this guy was with us last year and, you know, in the same backfield with and Gibson and J.D. McKissick. And when J.D. went down, he got his opportunity to play. And so when Gibson was down last year, we've seen the opportunity he provided for us. Um, I think we'll see him a little bit more on third down situations and probably see him on kickoff too. I think this guy, you know, in the preseason last year, we were so excited when he returned things like that. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit different in terms of um, bursts, I would say. Gibson has a little bit of a gear to him when he gets the ball in space. It's going to be a little bit different, but we're getting a little bit more natural runners from Williams and Patterson. I'm going to give you all two people that's possibly they, they may not play, right? Um, Cameron Curl and Benjamin St. Juice. Uh, DT, you take Cam Curl, uh, Breeze, you take BSJ, and let me know their importance to this game if they're not able to play. Man, I mean, we saw we saw that on Saturday, man. Let, let's <laughs> let's be real. Um, we said we said in the last episode um, about Cam Curl. Um, when Cam Curl doesn't play, I think that communication is vital it is so vital for this um defensive backfield especially not only just because of just for the defense purpose but a lot of young guys in that back seven right like Forrest only in his second year Benjamin St. Juice in his second year when he played a little bit um and just the ability like I see Cameron Curl as a neutralizer whenever mm. there's a, a as for a big play to be set up by the offense, he's already identified it, and then he erased it, and now it makes the quarterback go to his second and third read. I think that's how important Cameron Curl is to the defense, and we witnessed that on Saturday when the arguably their best weapon outside of Debo Samuel, um, George Kittle, well, he he went off on us. Um, I think he had his best game of the year against our defense, and you know. It's kind of hard to put it all on um the young guys, things like that. But it just shows, look, this all season right here, I'm gonna give an empty check to um Cameron Girl said, give me what we call him out you want. Cause that shows how much importance you have. This guy, man, he's so important to his defense, man. The games that he's not playing, that's the games we give up 30 points. Breeze. Oh man, um, BSJ, when healthy, I think he's proven that he is, you know, probably the best cornerback on the roster. Um, and on on top of that, when he doesn't play, and, and also when Cam Curl doesn't play, there's a, there's a trickle down effect through the secondary, and kind of everybody having to take a step up. Now everybody's kind of playing out of position, and it really it really weakens the the entire unit. Um, BSJ, you know, he, he's he's long, he's tall, he's fast. He can eliminate a lot of the matchup problems that we had with some of our other cornerbacks, probably being, like I said, the best, the most complete corner we have. So for him to not be out there, and even even if he does play and he's on a, on a busted wheel and can't really be him, you know what I mean, it affects their ability to cover on the back end. And, and you know, like I said, it, it, everybody else kind of suffers because of it. Yeah, man, I think these energies is going to be um... – it's something to look forward to. I mean, like we were saying at the top, man, this injury list, this injury report is crazy. And it's, it has some very impactful players. On the Cleveland Browns side, it's a lot of DMPs. It's a lot of rest. I know Clowney didn't play last week. Um, he was sick today, so he didn't practice off from a concussion. So um, we're, we're just not sure if he's going to play. I mean, pretty much everybody else, Miles Garrett, um, Kareem Hunt, all those guys is probably gonna gonna end up playing, but I knew they're down to like they fourth linebackers. I think some interior guys are also hurt. But for us, man, it's 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 a heck of a list. I mean, Forrest is on there, 
John Bostic, Percy Butler. It's like a lot of Brian Robson is on there. So it's a lot of people on that injury report that contribute. So tomorrow is going to be a big day um, for us as far as people getting out on the field to see if they're able to be in go. Because I don't like game time. Like any all game day decisions, I would like, nah, they ain't playing. If you got to be a game day decision, man. But it, it, it is a playoff game in a sense, right? So you never know um that they'll kind of you know try to push it like i think bsj did and sometimes it can be to our um detriment as it was uh last week but when we come back winsington winsington to dc <laughs> so we're going to talk about that when we come back hello ladies and gentlemen just coming to you all just wanted to share these amazing amazing top of products with you all that has helped me drop 60 pounds over a year and a half so look, I'm going to start out with our flagship product, which is our Facia Detox Tea. When I tell you what's amazing, it's going to clean out your upper and your lower intestines. And also, Facia stands for empty in Spanish. That's the first part. Now we have Violate 30, which is vitamin and liquid energy for 30 days. Now once you detox, it's going to take out good and bad. So this right here is going to put everything good back in your body, all the nutrients that you need. Now this here is a flare. The flare will definitely get you there. It has no caffeine, no sugars. You will not have jitters. It's all natural, all natural, and it gives you great energy. Last but not least, we have our CBD infused coffee, Caprice, Colombian blend, it helps keep you calm, does not have any caffeine or sugars, it's all natural. Chaga mushrooms and Garcinia gambodia, which is good for memory. So if you want to try any of these amazing products, all you have to do is reach out to me. You can reach me on Facebook at Van Thomas or Instagram at Van underscore the detox man. If you want to reach out, just hit me. I'll gladly get back to you. Peace. Welcome back to Interstellar. All right. So, Winsington to DC. Uh, not, not to DC. <laughs> Winsington, DC. Carson Wentz is now the starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders. DT, is this team better? Um, in my personal opinion, I believe this team is better because of the upside Carson Wentz provides. Um, look, I I have been very adamant that once Carson Wentz is healthy, they should go back to Carson Wentz because I feel like this offense is way more explosive. Um, it's way more efficient in the red zone when he is in there. Now, however, the team that we see now is not the team that he was – controlling in the first couple of weeks. Um, a lot of offensive line issues. Brian Robinson had that incident, got shot. He didn't come back to week five. He didn't start clicking as a running back until maybe um, in the middle of the season. Um, you will you also had um, bad play calling as well to go with Carson Wentz. And Carson Wentz was still learning the offense. When you look at the games that we won with Heineke, Heineke did enough to help us, but once you down the stretch, you go 0 to a 1. Eventually, you have to provide a spark, as Ron Rivera said to this team. I think this team is better with Carson Wentz, and we'll have more opportunities to score more points with Carson Wentz. Uh, I think we're averaging what 18 points per game, um, yeah, uh, scoring. Can Carson Wentz? What type of what type of impact can he have on that breeze? He's a better passer of the football than Taylor Heineke is, and I I love Taylor Heineke. Um, but Carson Wentz flat out has a better. He's more accurate. He's he has a much stronger arm than than Taylor Heineke does. I think he he can throw them kind of anticipation anticipation passes. You know, a little bit. we saw that in the beginning of the season, even though the team itself was struggling. We saw that. You know, where Taylor kind of struggled to lead guys downfield and a lot, and a lot of his balls end up contested. Like, Carson is throwing it out there and, and leading guys into the end zone, leading guys downfield and, and on target at that. Um, you know, I said I said when, you know, everything – first of all, 
let's get it out the way. Carson never actually got benched. You know what I mean? He lo- he wasn't starting because he got hurt. He never got benched for production. So that's first things first. So he's not. It's not like they're like they're benching Taylor for the guy that they benched him for. Like Carson Wentz got hurt, and that's pretty much the only reason he lost that job. Um, I've said for a while now. I feel like Carson Wentz is a better quarterback than Taylor Heineke, but for whatever reason, the team just gets a spark. They get they get a spark when Taylor came in the game, and that spark kind of fizzled out. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is the right time to go back to Carson. I think I think you know, with with what we, I think the offense, the team has a, has an identity now that we that they didn't have with Carson. I think you know that identity mixed with what we know Carson can do and exceed, excel, excel at. Excuse me. Um, I think it'll be. A, I think we'll be a better team with Carson. Hopefully, I mean we'll have to be than we've been the last three four weeks. Um, but I think we can be. We can yeah. do that. We can be that. What are you expecting from Carson Wentz, Breeze? This this upcoming game. Give me one thing that we haven't <laughs> seen that 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 we'll see from Carson Wentz this week. Twenty four points. <laughs> we gonna score more than eighteen points, man. <laughs> twenty four. Twenty four offensive points. Okay, offensive I like it. Points. Twenty four like offensive it. points. I like it. DT. Um, you know, I'm gonna say this quicker decisions. I think the mm. fact that he will sit on the sideline, he's he's actually learning a little bit more on the offense because you're watching a guy like Taylor who's been in the offense for the longest time. You see, okay, what Taylor is reading there, what could he could have done better in that situation and things like that. And you saw it, and even though the game was out of hand, reach. For the 49ers, you've seen Carson Wentz getting the ball out of his hand because he know the offensive line doesn't, won't provide enough time for him. And you see just the zip on the ball to for where receiver, they're not trying to catch it and trying to cradle themselves. They're able to catch it, and they're able to turn up field. So I think that's what he's providing right now because the knowledge of the offense will be way better with him now. All right, let's move to the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to give you three players' names on the offense of Cleveland Browns, DT, and you put them in order of importance for this game coming up. Amari Cooper, Nick Chubb, Deshaun Watt. <laughs> I made the script. <laughs> <laughs> I need the script, too. Um <laughs> Man, uh, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Cooper, Watson, Chubb. The okay. offense running to Nick Chubb, man. Once you take the running game away, you gotta force them to be able to be a passing team. And I don't think offensively, in my liking, I don't think they're good enough offensively to score. They may be more efficient, but I don't think they're able to come back and win the game. Uh, by like if they're down like twenty four points, like Breeze said. All right, Breeze, you got Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb, Mari Cooper. You want you want them in, in, in order, order from, of importance. Um, I will go with probably the same order. Um, Amari Cooper to to me, Amari, Amari Cooper, Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb. Um, I, I'm confident in our ability, minus that kind of last drive against the Giants. Like they, we've been pretty good against the run. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. Like Nick Chubb is going to be Nick Chubb to an extent, but like I'm, let him get his 50, 60 yards, and then going about his business. Um, but the fact that it's extremely possible that we may not have Benjamin St. Juice or Cam Curl versus a receiver like a Barry Cooper. That's that scares me, you know. What I mean, I know Deshaun Watson is still kind of working the kinks out a little bit, so I'm not 100% terrified of him. Although I know what he can be, um, but we we all know what Amari Cooper has done to this defense, not just this defense, but this team, team. you know, in in year in years past, um, and what he's capable of. He, albeit older, you know, probably lost half a step or something with a different team. But Amari Cooper is, is, the, is the guy that's scared that terrifies me for this team. All right, it's not too many people in the defense, right? We got Ward, we got Miles Garrett. Um, how much of an impact uh, do you think Miles Garrett DT is going to have up against on Sunday? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh well, 
obviously, I think he's going to have the same impact as a Nick Bosa. Um, this guy is one of the elite pass wrestlers in the NFL, and I think um, for Scott's sake, um, he needs to he needs to chip him, but we might have to take some holding calls this week, man. <laughs> <laughs> might have to deal with some holding calls this week. But in all seriousness, um, you got to chip him as many times. I would get a tight end and a running back, chip him from the side and chip him from the other side. So that way it gives just enough time for if he's lined up against Lino or he's lined against whoever we rotate and um, tackle. But Denzel Ward, we know Denzel Ward, um, he's going to be following Terry McCoy. I think that's going to be an opportunity for guys like Jahan Dotson, uh, Curtis Samuels, Diami, and the wide receiver group try to take advantage of their matchups. I think this is one of the top pass defenses that they'll be facing this year. So um, I look for Carson Wentz and Scott to have some um, schemed up pass plays um, in the first 15 plays to go up against his defense. Uh, Breeze, last week we talked about Nick Bosa, right? We talked about uh, you know, different ways that we can try to contain them, the chips, the double teams, and et cetera. We did it a couple times, but again, he was out there one-on-one. He was out there on the tight end. He was the, <laughs> he was just keep uh, uh, creating havoc. Um, what's the game plan going into this game against Miles Garrett? <laughs> if Scott Turner <clears> – <throat> If you see this by any by any stretch of the imagination, if you see this, um, <laughs> typically I would tell you to coach your game. Don't listen to fans. I need you to listen to me for a second, Scott. Um, Hat goes backwards. <laughs> I need you to listen to me, bro. Um, the tight end position, right, in the passing game is virtually giving us nothing all season, right? So because of that, don't even waste time running them out there. Listen. I need you. <laughs> I need you to slide. I need you to double team. I need you to chip all at one time. Um, <laughs> because, Chipping because, on a double team is man, crazy. <laughs> listen, bro. Listen, listen. It's gonna have to be one of them games because we saw, like, the last two games we've got elite, not just elite, like top, top flight, top level. Defensive ends going one on one against tight ends that aren't even good run blockers. What are they going to do in the pass block moving backwards? Like, we cannot afford to do this. Is a must win playoff game for all, of his, all intents and purposes. We cannot go into this game leaving Logan Thomas, uh, John Bates, Cole Turner, any of them tight ends one on one with Miles Garrett. He's going to run them over. Charles Leno, I love you. He's been struggling the last few weeks. It is what it is. Call a spade a spade. We have to do with anything possible to max protect the quarterback, right? You want to send a running back out on the, on the flare or whatever, cool, I found that. Swing pass, whatever, cool. But, like, in general, especially because we know Carson, of the three quarterbacks on the roster, Carson is the worst, for lack of a better term, of being able to avoid getting hit and, and evade uh, defensive ends, linebackers, all of that. You have to protect this man at all costs. Protect him and let him get the ball out of his hands quickly. Do not have him sitting back there patting the ball, don't no get 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 it out and protect him at all costs, bro. Please, please. <laughs> please. Uh, look, we're, we're going to talk about Ron Rivera and Carson Wentz these next two, two games. We want to figure out is these the most is these the two most important games since they've been here, um, right at the uh, at, at the next top after this after this commercial. There's a lot of bad stigma about shopping for a used car. Well, come visit us at iCargo Motors. We'll take care of you. We'll ensure that your experience is not only seamless and efficient, but also satisfying. Because at iCargo Motors, we believe that the best form of currency is integrity. So, Ron Rivera, he's went through so much, right? We can go down the line. He got the the Dan Snyder stuff. He he, he had cancer. His mom died. Uh, he had a player's brother die. Um, he had another player was involved in an accident that th th did it kill the girl, the, the girlfriend yes. yeah. killed the girl. So he, he has been through, I mean, COVID COVID was, what was a big thing. Um, 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 Alex Smith injury, like, like, like he, yeah, he had, he had to deal with that. Right. So, uh, uh, 
Um, who else, man? Uh, who am I missing? Um, the quarterback. Oh man, that that died this summer. Why well, I can't think of his name? Yeah, Dwayne Haskins. You know what I'm saying? Like that affected the team. Like all, all, all this stuff, all this stuff has gone on, right? DT, when we look at these two games, the one thing that everyone can agree on that GM Ron has missed on is quarterback. I think we all can agree that agree on that, right? So yeah. these next two games, are these the how important or are these the most important games that Ron Rivera has will be coaching in a Redskins football team commander's uniform? I believe it is, uh, quite frankly. Um, year three was supposed to be the late year where everything was established. Your foundation was created. You had your standard set in place. Um, this was the year that we expected this team to take the next step in his uh, future plans, becoming a one of the top teams in the NFL. Now, um, year has been shaky. Um Offensive line definitely falling under the expectations we had, especially two years straight being top 10 and 25 offensive line combinations through three years is absolutely ridiculous. But at the end of the day, we're here right now at 7 7 to 1 with a chance to get in the playoffs by winning out. But we also faltered down the line with two games that we should have won in the Giants. I believe these games are so important because this will define if Ron has the plan to actually work in D.C. This also defines Carson Wentz's career, and it's almost like a script, almost like a storybook. Uh, in the same situation with the Indianapolis Colts, they, were, they had two games to win, and they lost to the Raiders, and they lost to the famous Jaguar game. This is time to re redefine his career. You're playing a Browns team that has fallen under their expectations. They they really don't have much to play for. And then the final game of the year, you're playing against one of your biggest rivals in the NFL, in the Dallas Cowboys, who have continuously put on a hot streak. So it's a lot to say. It's a lot. But I, I think – I think if we don't get in the playoffs this year, man, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in year four. If 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 Carson Wentz doesn't win these two games that we're supposed to win, I don't see him back. And I see a short leash on Ron Rivera. I, I hate to say it because our ceiling cannot be seven wins. <clears throat> It has it has to be ten. It has to be eleven. That's our ex expectation, regardless of what other fan bases think. We're we're trying to win here, and we haven't won yet. And that's all I have to say. I mean, who is Ron Rivera? You know, uh, Breeze. Are we going to find out who the real Ron Rivera? Ron Rivera, please stand up. Are we going <laughs> to see that guy on Sunday, or who is this guy? Man, I, I honestly don't know what to expect. Like, to, to DT's point, or to, to y'all point, like, this is probably, these two games are probably the biggest um, games of his, at least, Washington football career. You know what I mean? Um, only The only, I guess, caveat, if you want to say, for Ron himself, is that I feel like Ron kind of has – scapegoats this season, if you want to call it that. He he has this quarterback situation with Wentz and Heineke. He can, he, he, can, he can blame Wentz getting hurt and Taylor Heineke falling off, knowing he was supposed to be a backup. He, can, he has, if he really wants to, he can blame Scott Turner for not really grasping things, not really having to feel for certain things and moving the like So Ron kind of has outs. Um, that being said, I don't want it to come to any of that. I don't want him to have, have to use any of those outs, those scapegoats. I need Ron to, you know, Pull his big boy pants and go out there and and and, and lead these dudes to a football game to to, to a win, especially this this Sunday. Like you you talk, you know you you gonna have the the hogs in the building. You, you got Joe Gibbs in the in the building, like you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Like this is this is like this is when you need to. Okay, now nah, I can do that too. Like I can I can be that guy. 
Um, but you know, and you gonna see. We're gonna see, you know, actions speak louder than words. So you can talk a good game all you want, but at some point you got to show and prove your worth. So hopefully we go out and show it. All right, keys to the game. Give me three keys to the game to winning the game. <laughs> winning the game, DT. Three keys to the game. Uh, number one key, running the football on time possession. Um, this defense for the Browns ranked 25th against run. Uh, we've been hearing all week from uh, the Browns fans that their defensive tackle um, has been – they have been pretty weak against the run. And the more we run the ball with B-Rob and Williams and Patterson and keep the offense on the field, that keeps our defense fresh. Number two, obviously, get after Deshaun Watson. Um we understand that Deshaun Watson is a dual threat quarterback, but he does have tendency to hold the ball longer than expected. Um, I believe this defensive line can get after this offensive line. Um, and the final point, win the turnover battle. I think these two teams, they do have tendencies to turn all the ball over in certain moments and things like that, but I believe we have to be the ones – with Carson Wentz and his ability to have that quick strike when we are getting tired of having the 10-play drives, um, we got to find a way to get the ball back for our offense to have multiple possessions. Uh, I think this could be a good opportunity for our defense with strip sacks, uh, interceptions, and just to flip the field and make it easier for the offense. Breeze, we need to um, run the ball, of course. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We, you know, want to hit the, the the deep ball, but what yeah. are some keys to the to, to this game for us to come out on top and to be able to get those twenty four points that you kind of talked about earlier? <laughs> so, number one, I wholeheartedly agree. Run the football. Um, as DT was, was talking, I kind of thought about it a little bit. Like with them having a a weaker defense and Gibson possibly not playing, and us essentially having three kind of power backs more or less in the game, this could be a a good week to just lean on somebody, just beat them up. You know what I mean? Like, just you got Robinson, hammer, hammer, hammer. Rob Tyler, all right, cool. Uh, Jonathan Williams, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Just keep pounding them, keep pounding them, um, and just wear the defense down. This could be, you know, get Gibby is a, he's a different kind of player, although he's a bigger dude. He's not necessarily a power player, so he doesn't really give you that same um, attitude, I guess, on the field. I would change number two for me rather than – Applying pressure to Deshaun Watson, I would focus more on protecting our quarterback. Um, again, knowing what you know, if if Clowney and well, Garrett's gonna play in there. If Clowney, if Clowney and Garrett both play, you can't really afford to really, you know, focus on one person because the other one's gonna go get you. Um, and again, like like we all stated, like I stated earlier, you know, Carson being the, the worst out of the group of being able to run and, and, and avoid getting hit. Um, and knowing what them, what Carson getting hit and them applying pressure to Carson could do and how it could throw off the offense. Um, what was your third point again, DC? I think I, I think that was my third point too. Your third key. Uh, what's the third of a battle? Yes, 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 yes. The the key when when the team was at its hottest point during the season was with a four game win streak, five game win streak. Mm-hmm. We were creating turnovers, fumbles, interceptions. We were sacking the quarterback. We were we were we were winning those winning those battles, um, and I think. You know, it definitely, definitely against Dallas, but for, but to get to that point, we got to do it against Cleveland as well. Um, we got to start forcing turnovers again. We can't just and not just allow. I mean, rely on you know Derek Forrest to you know come up lucky. Like we need, we need to get some some, some, some <laughs> strip sacks. We need to, you know, what I'm saying we need to get some, some strip sacks. We need to get you know force some fumbles in the backfield. We need. You know, if St. Juice plays or Danny Johnson, Jeremy Reed, you know, Bobby McCain, we need somebody else to, to you know, jump up and, and, and get in on that on that party. Um, It's not about us, right? <laughs> Last year, my hot take about the AFC West <laughs> was that the Las Vegas Raiders will win the division. Whew! <laughs> <laughs> and that, my buddy, has come back to hunt me to a point where 
they have sent their starting quarterback home the last two games. He's not <laughs> going to be around the team. DT, how did we get here? Man, I'll tell you how they get there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that organization has done Derek Carr wrong. That that's just fine line, man. I, I mean, I understand when we talk about the quarterback position, we always talk about the Patrick Mahomes, uh, the Josh Allen's, the Justin Herberts, the Joe Burrows. And, you know, not everybody is going to get those type of quarterbacks. There's always going to be a tier. I don't care what you believe in. You're always going to have a tier. You're going to have your elite tier. You're going to have your good tier, your mid tier, and you're just going to have your cast offs. And I believe that Derek Carr, in my opinion, he is somewhere down the line between good and mid. He's like a guy. He's in that Kirk Cousins tier where he can win you games and he can lose you games. But what have the Raiders done for him? <laughs> Do you know that the past couple of years, their first round picks that they have drafted under Mike Mayock, none of them guys are on that team anymore? Did anyone forget that Khalil Mack got traded? Did anyone forget that Amari Cooper was his teammate? In his first couple of years, does anyone know that he had had a defense that was better than 19th? 20th. And he had Jack Del Rio. Well, 20th, even even worse. And Jack Del Rio <laughs> was his coach for a couple of years. So to say all this, man, and I seen on timeline and things like that, people slandering him and things like that. Man, situations matter, man. And yeah. I like their car, and I hope he gets to a team where he's appreciated. He is actually a great man from when you listen to teammates talk about him and how he affects the group, affects people. He's going to get an opportunity because not everybody has a quarterback. Um, Breeze, like, <laughs> obviously the, the situation with – Gruden last year and uh the heat coming from out of there and all the crazy stuff that was going on. It 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 it, it wasn't one of the owners, it wasn't a GM, it wasn't make it wasn't none of those guys. The person that was in front of the organization speaking on their behalf was Derek Carr. Right. So we get to this point where we are now, um, and we always talk about loyalty, right? but there's never any loyalty shown to players, right? It's very, very rare loyalty is shown to players. So when it comes to Derek Carr, do you even think he wants to be there next year? Do you think he's going to want to move on? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Derek Carr grew up a Raiders fan, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he if, if that is correct, you know, he grew up a fan of the team. He's got one of his best friends playing wide receiver. Like, I think in a perfect world, he for sure would want would, – he wants to be a Raider. He may not want to be there with, you know, the, the people currently there. Um, but I think for sure – and I think that situation may work itself out in about a month or so anyway. But um, I think he for sure wants to be a Raider. Even, like, you know, he, he, he left – he. I guess they mutually agreed on him leaving the team so he wouldn't be a distraction. Like that, to me, that's somebody that cares about the people in that locker room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and their their focus and them finishing out, out the rest of the season strong. Like, I, you know, I'd rather leave and support y'all, you know, privately than to be out here and me, just my pure presence is a distraction to everybody. And, you know what I mean? So I, I think, you know, he, he would want to be there and he cares about the people in that building. But, you know... <laughs> Josh McDaniels, I think I think it was I think it was the Steve Harvey show. Yeah, I remember when Steve Harvey, whenever he would get annoyed or mad, he'll walk out the, and knock something over on the door. <laughs> like, I feel like I feel like that's what like Josh McDaniel was. He knows like that seat that seat is 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 scorching hot right now, and I'm pretty sure it's you know gonna be vacated fairly soon. I feel like he knows that he's on his way out the door, just knocking stuff over. Like yeah, I right, go. Uh, y'all don't need that no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, 
Like he he's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, like I'm taking ev- I'm taking this down with me. Is like is the way it is saying because it doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, man, I think I think Derek Carr wants to be a Raider. I just don't think he it ain't gonna be with with uh, Josh McDaniels and 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 who, the people in power in in Vegas right now. Who you think goes, DT? Is it McDaniels and company? It, 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 McDaniels or Carr? Mm, that's tough. This is, he just got there, and um, I think Derek Carr goes. I think, I think, I think his time has ran its course. He's he's been there for five plus years. Um, two playoff appearances, but multiple years ended with ten plus losses. I, I think, I think they're going in a new direction. Um. I just, to me, it should be McDaniel's, but I just I find it hard to believe with Davis over there running the organization that they would cut him off that quick. Breeze, who you got, Carl Daniels? Wait, Josh McDaniel's is the one that's got this crazy contract where they like they technically like basically can't fire him, right? Yep. It's pretty much. much. <laughs> well, that's pretty much well, like every coach too, though. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, but they can't be paying like. Well, they they not paying John Gruden, right? Or are they still paying John Gruden? Did this contract get severed? I don't know. I don't no. know if his contract got severed or not. I, I think know. there was something. I think there was something with well, if that he because resigned, of why he got fired. Yeah, I, I think know. it was something different because of why he lost his job. I don't. I don't know. Um, but now, now that I think about it, with Josh McDaniels kind of being unfireable to an extent, um, I guess it might have to be Derek Carr. Yeah, I, uh, yeah that, that sucks. That, so we want to we we, we, yeah. we 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 gonna pause this. Um, we we, <laughs> we definitely gonna come back to this conversation. In the, uh, I don't know if it's going to be next week, the week after, or three, four weeks from now. But <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come yeah. Let's get to some score predictions. I have the Commanders at 17-10 on Sunday. Breeze, what do you have? Because I already threw my 24 points out there. Um, <laughs> I mean, we can get a defensive to... touchdown. Yeah, no, I ain't going that far. Jared, um, Jared Patterson take one to the house, kick a turn. See, 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 see. You oh. reaching, you reaching now. You reaching, you reaching. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 24-17, Commander. What you got DT? Twenty-four seventeen. Oh, man. Um, I actually like that. I actually like that twenty-four for some reason. Actually, I. I said twenty three sixteen. Uh, just take the extra points off. I think. Um, I think we're going to see the, a better efficient offense um, this week, and I think the defense rebounds um, against the Browns. Good, good stuff, good stuff. I can't wait, man. This is big games. Another playoff game. Meaningful football in December. Actually, it's going to be meaningful football in January. When the last time we could actually say that? To an extent, but we have it. So, any last comments, Breeze? Oh, and it's New yes. Year's too. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, because yeah. it's gonna be our last time speaking to y'all. Probably the happy New Year, happy holidays, everybody. Um, win the game, man. Like win, win the game. <laughs> like, like we, we, we can. I mean, technically we can, but like we can't lose this game. We control our destiny. Control it. Like take, take command. Take you know command. Like, take command. <laughs> like, like, win the football game, man. Same thing as every week, man. Just play smart, disciplined football and coach. Same way, you know, and, and win the game. Win the game. Please win the game. Yeah, man. Win the game. So we're going <laughs> to let DT. Never know what he's going to bring. So yeah, I'm man. Yeah. DT, so yeah, after, right now, I'm going to say. <laughs> Nah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going to I'm gonna say happy, have a happy new year to everyone out there. Uh, we thank y'all for listening down through the year. Thank y'all for supporting us, man. It, it, it means a lot. New podcast getting out. I think this is our fourth or fifth 
maybe I think it's the third or fourth unofficial, I mean, official, uh, maybe fifth or sixth uh, unofficial pod together. Of course, CeeLo couldn't be here today. Um, but yeah, you will see him for the post game for sure. But yeah, man, happy new year, DT. Bring us home, baby. <laughs> Look, man, this is, like I said, um, these are the most important games in the Ron Rivera wins era. Um, these games that you have to win no matter what. I don't I don't care how Dal- how good Dallas look. You have to beat Dallas not only for the sake of the rivalry, but for the sake of getting in the playoff and having an opportunity to win a playoff game since the 2005 season. And it starts with the Cleveland Browns. I think this is a good opportunity for Carson Wentz to reshape his career. It's a good opportunity for this team to get back on track. And hopefully we can come back here in New Year and we can make some noise in the playoffs, man. Take command. Take command. Welcome to Owning the Huddle podcast presented by Red Zone in the Lab, where we discuss all things Washington Commanders from the executive and front offices, coaches, players, and fan experience. Join DT, Breeze, CeeLo, and Deuce as they break down the pre and post games. Do it because you love it and not because it loves you. Hail Commanders!